I would like to switch gears to something that is your forte, which is to find the highest and best use uh, of a piece of land. How do you approach that and decide what to build and if you want to get that piece of land and go yeah, through the so entitlement process? Perfect. Yeah. Um, it comes down to vision for it. It's not necessarily, you know, individuals will bring us pieces of dirt all the time or ask me, Amy, I want to bring you a deal. What do I need to look at? What has this got to be? And I said, well, like, it just, it's got to depend, right? Yeah. So, and, and people have different visions. So my answer here is not the end all be all. Just so you just sure. So, um, but for us in our process, we get a piece of land. First of all, for me, if it's under five acres, I don't really want to wor worry about it. For it. Okay. Right? So, because doing something with three acres is the same amount of work, same amount of headache as it does to do with 300 acres. Now, remember, I'm in Utah. I have a lot more land than somebody that's in Manhattan. If somebody's in Manhattan, they, you know, they're not talking acres. You know, they're talking square feet, and that's totally different, or they're working with airspace. So in my market of what we focus on, which are mostly the Western, we do a lot of our large land development in the Western states. So, you yeah, know, we do have acreage to work with. So first of all, it's got to be five acres or more because I don't want to, I have done like a project that's like, oh, we made eight, eight lots, you know, and that's great, but it's kind of not worth my time anymore. So yeah. five acres or more. And then I'm going to look at what, first I'm going to look at the overview of the market and I want to look and see where's, what's the need? What is the city's master plan? Just because they have something in their master plan doesn't mean they want to stick with it, just so you know there. Um, but what's the city's master plan? What's their vision? So what's the city's vision? What's the market's vision? What is the market demanding right now? For example, right now, I I am not looking necessarily for really large lots, you know, humongous houses. Um, attainable housing is a lot more in demand. So that means right. almost like multifamily housing, right? Townhome developments. And that's not because I love the look of townhomes or anything like that, but that's what the market is demanding and what, what is really needed in there, in the community. We're also working on a project. So, okay, well, let me take one more step back. So we've got the city's vision, the market conditions vision, and then the possibility of what's there. Now, there may be some products that were very successful in other cities that now we take and put it in this city. That's a newer product. And this is where I'll give the example. Right now we are working with a piece that's five acres. So just hit our amount. Um, and the city wanted it just zoned commercial. Okay, well, commercial is great if if you have a specific tenant, but it's not, you know, if you build it, they will come. You, you've got to build it specific for the commercial people. You know, Jack in the Box wants a specific look or Starbucks or whatever. So you can't just go start building for a commercial. Um, but a product that we've done in Brigham City in another city and I've also seen successful in other cities. Um, and, and it's a way for us to introduce, uh, to respond to the market, which they're saying, okay, we need, we want some commercial, but we also need attainable housing, multifamily housing yeah. or townhomes on top. And so we've designed this unit that is one single tax ID. It's not a lease on the bottom. But it's one single tax ID. It's an individual townhome. The bottom is a commercial use that they can they can run a business from. They don't need to get a special license for. And the top, the other two floors, are the residential housing for it. 
And so the maker spaces, we call them maker spaces usually, they're really high demand. They sell for about $100,000 more than the typical townhome unit. Uh, the homeowner loves it because now they can uh, legally, in Utah, people just run things out of their house anyway, of their businesses. <laughs> even though they're really not supposed to. But now they legally can. And they have like, oh, I have like a storefront. You know, I maybe I have an online business, but now I also have a storefront that I can work downstairs have people come in or I have an esthetician or, you know, like I have this commercial professional storefront that I can come into and I still live in my house and it's all, I can get an FHA loan. on. Hmm. Oh. So, yeah. So it's exciting and really high demand and the cities love it because they're like, holy cow, this brings in small business owners and it provides the housing that we need. And then I like it because they would never have passed, um, they would never pass just townhomes there to begin with. Uh, but yeah. they allow me to put townhome with these maker spaces that are connected. And so you're selling the entire parcel from top to bottom. To yeah, one, it's one tax ID for that one unit. So we're fitting 30 units in here in this five acres for it. So um yeah. help me visualize where that is in a city so I can understand how who so the neighbors, just so you understand of this, like my, my parcel is here. The neighbor is a Starbucks. Okay. And is it in a busy street? Is it a more of a side street? This the Starbucks is on a very busy street, but then down here is kind of like a side street. Okay. Wow. Wow. I have not heard of this concept yet. Yeah. Congratulations. So it's it's kind of thinking outside the box and looking at that. We have done, for example, those small businesses, I think are huge, and, and maybe it's just a Utah market. Versus, but I, I'm seeing it in other markets right now, is the small business owners, especially a for sale product, is really, really needed right now. So we do the same thing on industrial flex. Now, really large industrial flex is being built all over for it in, in multiple states. What's not being built of industrial flex is having small, small individual kind of minimized industrial flex yeah. for it. So you can get a premium for selling that. And then if you go and explain to the city and give them the vision that these are small business owners, it's basically taking over the strip mall, you know, the strip mall, whatever design that they had before. Mm -hmm. But the strip mall wasn't serving, you know, there's not a large warehouse that you have your products in. You don't have a large man door, you know, like garage door and all of those things. So we have to educate and explain to the city these market trends and demands and what's needed and why that's driving it. And then we help explain that as a vision to, sure. to the city. So all of those all of those based on highest and best use. So when people ask you, ask me, like, Amy, what do you build? And I mentioned, you know, well, we're large land development and we will do, I mean, I've done commercial, I've done mixed use, I've done, you know, multiple zonings inside, but it doesn't mean I'm vertical and owning all of those assets. I just, but it makes sense for the master plan. You know, if you have 38, right. you're doing yeah. a little change. So, yeah. And so it sounds like it might not, these people might not necessarily need storefront because it's not in a major. But it uh, can walk. be, they can have a storefront, but they're right. probably of knowing, um, they're probably knowing it more from uh, like online first. So, right. But they have a sign on the front of their building, sure. yes. And what if they need TI? What if they're like a pastry chef or for yeah. example? Well, if they're TIs, I mean, if it's a for sale product, they we only give them the gray shell. Okay. Okay. They're TIs. It's well, they're not a TI, they're the owner, right? Right. So it's their own 
things inside. Okay. So they do their own improvements. In the building, yeah. Then there's TIs and that's negotiated. It just depends on the market. Okay. Oh, that sounds very cool. Thanks for sharing. It's the yeah. first time I hear about something like that. Uh, and now that, you know, now that you have all of this happening and you have the systems in place, can you share maybe a couple of tips on how you manage things and how do you keep the company growing from a leader's perspective? Yeah. Um, so delegation is super important utilizing the actual systems i found when i get overwhelmed is because i'm actually not utilizing the systems that we have for it i revert back to my old ways of things being able to say no to things that don't serve you yeah. um, is really important and setting expectations is also really important and that can be expectations for vendors, other contractors that we're working with, you know, civil engineers, you know, having a clear scope of work so that you're not, they have those expectations. So you're not spending extra time being like, oh, I've got to email this person and see where are they at for it. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are checking in. The other part, and this is for me, I don't know. I don't know if this is great for other people, but I I live and breathe by my calendar. And so if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, so that means even if it's a work session, like say my, my executive assistant, that we need to work on a project and it's just, we're just working on something. Um, we will We will time block that and we'll put it in the calendar and it'll get it'll get there for it. And we are on Zoom working together for it. Yep. Or even if it's like in person, it, it's got to be in my calendar. So if it's not in the calendar, I'm, I, I mean, I, I'm i so bad with my calendar now, not so bad, but I'm so dependent upon it that even I've trained my kids and my five kids. I'm like, look, if you have a tournament, if you have a I don't know, an audition or whatever, you've got to add it to my calendar. And they know how to, that I have taught them how to make a calendar invite and add mom. In. <laughs> now that may sound like I'm a very impersonal person or very tough. I, no. I, I, when I'm, when I'm home, I'm definitely, I'm definitely home and that's fabulous. I work less now than I ever have. Mm -hmm. So that's fabulous. I just, but I, I explained to them, I'm like, look, I have mom brain now. And I, I guess I've kind of learned that through that illness of the two years that especially when I was on some really high medication, I really, I really was a zombie. Like I really couldn't remember things. And so because of that, people are, maybe that's where my kids are like, oh, okay, I've got to make sure mom remembers by putting this in here. And now I, I'm better. I can remember more, but I've also like, why, why carry around that mental load constantly? Yeah. No. And if you know that it can be in your device of your calendar. Why not lean on that tool for it? So, so that's what we do. So on Sundays, especially we we talk, especially inside the family of my husband and I, we, you know, we go through our week and plan our week and say, what's this week look like? You know, am I missing anything that's not in our case? So. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you. That's very helpful and so insightful. We're all at different stages of our careers and um, I'm in a similar stage as yours right now, funny enough partnering up with somebody uh, and it's it's really good to see that good people are still out there and um, <laughs> I think the people that are conservative like we are will always survive no matter what so thank you so much Amy is there anything else that you think is important for our audience to know that we haven't covered yet no I don't think so Maybe just give your, if you're listening to this and feel overwhelmed or wherever you are in your journey, but give yourself some grace, you'll get 
to where you want to go, but be intentional, but give yourself grace. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Amy, for making the time and sharing all of your wonderful knowledge and experience with us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.